Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, both online and in person. Uh, we're streaming this session uh, as usual with most of our new hybrid sort of events. My name is Hassan Mohsine, and I'm the program manager for Microsoft Reactor in this region in the Middle East and Africa. Um, in the reactors, we are hubs for founders and developers to meet, learn, and connect to local peers, as well as learn from industry experts, the open source community, all about what's happening in the technology. And today's session is continuation of that. Uh, we have uh, been having Hadil uh, doing a series of talks about uh, data analytics and data science, and she will talk more about her session today. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we have this session streamed and recorded. So also after today's session, uh, make sure you are part of the community on Meetup. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find uh, today's session and you will continue uh, the learning journey with the content that is available there and also with the modules that we will uh, reference. That's all for now. Hadil, please. Thank you, Hussam. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning from wherever you are watching us in the world. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you and share my knowledge with you about data science uh, and all that data analytics stuff. My name is Adil Shaber, and I am a regional cloud advocate and data analytics engineer for Microsoft Middle East and Africa. And my goal here as a cloud advocate is to take you on a journey and share my knowledge with you all, uh, specifically in concepts, technical concepts in data science, data analytics, machine learning, AI, as well as exploring other tech topics or fields uh, related to technology. Um, I'm, very, I'm very excited to see you all and uh, thank you everyone for joining, for joining us uh, live as well. Please let us know in the comments where you're joining us, where you're watching us from, uh, as we would love to know. Uh, so today's topic, we will be talking about demystifying data roles and cloud services. And that is part of uh, my fundamentals of data science. So we're go it's going to be like a beginner-ish series where we'll, we'll be discussing uh, the different data roles and the cloud services, Microsoft Azure cloud services related to those data roles uh, specifically in the world of data. And with that, uh, we're going to begin. So before we begin, uh, this event is part of our Microsoft Reactor Code of Conduct. So please uh, just take a moment to go through it. Uh, you know, be welcoming, be respectful, be friendly, and most importantly, be understanding of each other's differences and opinions. Uh, I mean, we are all here to learn and to share our knowledge. So uh, we love that in engagement and interaction as well. So please feel free to uh, share your voice and uh, and just be friendly and open to all questions and viewpoints. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm Hadid Shubair. I am a regional cloud advocate for Microsoft Middle East and Africa, as well as a data analytics engineer. I recently joined Microsoft uh, as data analytics engineer and cloud advocate because I am very passionate about learning, exploring, and sharing my knowledge with the community, uh, specifically in topics related to data science, analytics, machine learning, and AI. Um, prior to joining Microsoft, I have been, uh, I was selected to be a woman of tech ambassador for Google, uh, where I shared my knowledge with the community uh, in tech topics as well, and even like in the business and outside business. So I'm all about that community empowerment. I'm all about, you know, sharing the knowledge and learning together uh, and all that. Um, this is my LinkedIn and my email on screen. If you would like to connect with me anytime, uh, please feel free to do so. So uh, today we will be going through some concepts. Uh, first, we'll be talking about the evolution of technology uh, over the years. We will explore core tech fields. Uh, we will identify the most common professional data roles. Uh, we will talk about some applications and use cases that we have related to data. And we will lastly identify the common cloud uh, Azure services related to those uh, roles. So what are we going to be learning today? We will explore and differentiate between the core fields uh, from data science, data analytics, machine learning, and AI. See what makes what makes each one different from the other, and how they're kind of like related to one another in a way with the applications of each. 
We will also learn about the various roles, uh, professional uh, roles I'm talking about in data that organizations often apply to data professionals. And lastly, we will exp uh, explore the tasks and responsibilities associated with these roles and the Microsoft Azure services used to perform them. Uh, I will be talking more about this as we go uh, in this session. So let's begin. Now, over the last decade, the amount of data that systems and devices generate has increased significantly. I mean, up to date, uh, we have around 2.5 quintillion bytes of data uh, that are generated today uh, at a current pace. 90% uh, of the world's data today has been created in the last two years alone, which I think is crazy. So um, because of this high increase, uh, new technologies, roles, and approaches to working with data are affecting data professionals in organizations. Now, when it comes to data professionals, uh, they typically fulfill different roles when managing, using, controlling, and working with data. And we will dig deeper uh, into, this, into these points as we go in the session. So let's go back a bit to where it all started and talk about the evolution of technology. Now, back in the 1960s, technology had little impact, but it, there was some kind of curiosity. Uh, a decade later, in the 1970s, technology started having a little more impact. In the 1980s, technology basically started invading homes and it started to change behaviors. The way customers, like customers started uh, being integrated to make uh, more informed business decisions in the organizations, uh, even in customer behaviors and so, so that was in the 1980s. In the 1990s, technology was basically everywhere. Uh, and that was a huge step forward, of course. Uh, it began to connect us all around the globe. Uh, this is where we had uh, uh, customer relationships and, and more so. In the 2000s, technology started enabling more seamless communication and it started connecting us all around uh, together. Um, and lastly, in, 2000, in the 2010s, technology, this is where technology became fully integrated into our lives. This is where we had the internet, we had smartphones, we had smart devices uh, and all that. Uh, so now we, of course, if you see it that way, we live in a more uh, fully digital world. However, where's technology today? So speaking of today, uh, technology is somewhere else. We have what we call the Internet of Things. Now, just to keep it uh, short and simple, the Internet of Things is basically everything around us is connected to the Internet. So basically, we have emails, e-commerce, uh, e e uh, emails, uh, e-travel, anything that can come to mind that's connected to the Internet is a part of the Internet of Things. Now, if you look around you right now in the, in the era that we're in, we, we have the Internet of Devices, uh, Internet of Things, devices, and products all around us. For example, we have the Fitbit, the smartwatches. Uh, we have even uh, self-driving cars like Tesla. Uh, and there are so many other applications uh, that we can use. So this says that the Internet of Things is changing and it is shifting the way we see technology and where technology is heading. Now, aside to the Internet of Things, of course, we have, like, we have machine learning, AI, we have uh, data analytics, automation, neural networks, pattern recognition, uh, image and speech recognition as well. So with all these new technologies coming up, I mean, this says that the future is heading, the future of technology is heading uh, somewhere else, and I believe the possibilities will be limitless and endless. So now that we've talked about all that, we are going to start exploring core tech fields. And by core fields, I mean data science, data analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and even talk about big data. Let's see what the definition of each one is and what makes, uh, what differs, uh, what, how they differ from one another. Now, data science is just like its name, the science of data. So data science basically is, uh, it uses scientific methods, approaches, or uh, algorithms that are used to extract knowledge and insights from noisy, structured, and unstructured data, and apply that knowledge from data across a broad range of application domains. So the main goal of data science is we want to extract knowledge, use scientific methods and research uh, and algorithms in order to discover new questions, extract knowledge, and make sense of this knowledge in order to drive innovation and answer questions. Uh, there are many application areas where data science can be applied, uh, and we will dig deeper into that. But however, some of the application areas we have 
uh, include digital ads, internet research, and image and speech recognition. Now, what is data analytics? Data analytics is basically the, when you have a data set, you want to explore the data set, analyze the data set, and extract insights from the data set in order to make value and be able to make better uh, informed uh, business decisions. So data analytics is the process of analyzing raw data in order to make conclusions about that information. And the way we can remember data analytics is analytics is all about action, taking action. So it's all about actionable insights. The goal of analytics is to use existing information in order to cover hidden patterns, actionable data, draw meaningful insights, as well as be able to solve problems in organizations. Uh, right now, all organizations, like all fields and industries, can depend on data analytics uh, to solve uh, problems. For example, why did my sale, uh, why did the sales uh, decrease this year? You know, you can take the data from last year, compare it, analyze the data, and then from there, you can see where the problem is. Yes? I couldn't hear you, sorry. Can you share any personal experiences you had when it comes to these things? In that analysis? I'm very sorry, but I can't hear you because of my. Yes. Any personal experiences you had when it comes to data analytics? Can you please share? Yes, of course. So that's a good question. Um, so, uh, what was your name? Uh, you can so I'm actually Yes, pleasure to meet you. Um, so he asked us to. He asked me to share an experience that I have with data analytics. So for me, taking back, I will take you back on a personal journey. Uh, we're gonna stop for a minute and just talk about this. Uh, for me, I graduated from my bachelor's degree. Uh, with an industrial engineering and engineering management uh, degree. So it was something totally not related to tech. I explored, this, I, I explored this field a bit. However, I had a curiosity for computers my whole life. And then when I started discovering there was something called data analytics and technology and, and all that new stuff, uh, I was very curious about it. So therefore, I, took, I, I graduated with a master's degree from RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, uh, with data analytics. And after I graduated with, uh, from that, I started doing some private projects uh, on data analytics, working with Python, working with R, working with all those tools and learning all the machine learning algorithms, the AI tools as well, you know, because basically they can be applied everywhere. Um, so uh, I would definitely, you know, like, because you're a machine learning engineer, so you obviously know the background that we come from. So I hope that I kind of answered your question. Yeah? Perfect. Great, great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So as we said, uh, with data analytics, uh, it's all about actionable insights. So we, we use the existing information in order to uncover actionable data, draw meaningful insights, and as well as uh, solve problems. Application in, uh, areas could be healthcare, energy management, and travel. And there are many, many, many more that we will be talking about as we go. Now, big data. Big data is just like its name, data that is huge. So it's voluminous amounts of data, uh, which could be structured or unstructured, where organizations can potentially mine and analyze for business gain. So big data, uh, as we said, there are three types of data, uh, big data. You have unstructured data, semi-structured data, and uh, unstructured data. Structured data is basically data that follows a predefined format or structure. So usually it's organized into rows or columns, and the, the best example I could give you like is, is a Google spreadsheet, for example, in Excel. Semi-structured data is data that is not structured or unstructured, but it's, it's, it, it does not follow a specific structure, but has some kind of format to it. Uh, the best example of semi-structured data we have could be like emails. They don't follow a specific format, however, somewhat are somewhat structured. Unstructured data are data that is not structured, does not follow a predefined format or structure. And uh, an example of unstructured data we have is could be videos, binary files, images, and so much more. Application areas where big data is mostly used, uh, mostly in education, in retail, and in financial services. And as I said, we'll be talking more about those application areas as we go. So just to recap, data science uses scientific methods and researches to, uh, to, from data cleansing to preparation to analysis. Uh, big data will uh, collect large amounts of uh, data 
uh, in order to support decision making processes and analytics is the uh, the process of taking data analyzing it in order to derive insights so we've talked about data science analytics big data but however we have some key differentiators that we will we will talk about when it comes to skills we talked about the objections uh, objectives when it comes to skills uh, big data, the skills for big data requires analytical skills, creativity, statistical skills, and business skills. Now, just keep in mind that these are the skills that are usually yeah, uh, cover in most organizations. However, it could differ from one organization to another, from one role to another, uh, the kind of uh, the kind of specific skill or, or uh, that you kind of need. Uh, however, these cover most of what organizations ask for when it comes to being a data scientist, a big a big data engineer or a data analytics engineer. Uh, in data science, uh, usually it, it uh, because it's scientific, so we need you need to have an understanding of statist statistical analyt analytics tools, uh, R or Python, uh, any kind of programming language, uh, Hadoop and SQL, structured, structured query language as well, and so much more. When it comes to data analytics, uh, of course, you need to have a, a good foundation knowledge of programming skills, whether it, it, it be in uh, R or in Python, uh, statistical skills as well, machine learning skills and knowledge of machine learning algorithms uh, as well, uh, and data wrangling, data visualization, and all that stuff. When it comes to tools, um, big data usually um, uh, they, they, com they employ complex technological tools to handle the data because the data is so huge, so they need complex technological uh, tools that is able to handle all that massive data. Data science uses scientific programming tools and techniques to process big data, and data analytics uses predictive and statistical modeling with relatively simple tools. Uh, I believe we've covered the objectives and the sectors as well, so I'm not going to go through them again, um, because we will cover the applications uh, in the next sector. Now let's move, to, uh, move on to artificial intelligence. What is AI? AI is a, br a branch of computer science concerned with building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. Basically, AI enables a machine, a robot, a computer to act just the same way a human does. Uh, so the goal, is, the goal of AI is to create technology that allows computers and machines to work intelligently. And some popular examples could be smart personal assistants like Siri or Alexa, self-driving cars like Tesla, and Netflix recommendations as well. Please go ahead. According to you, uh, define intelligence. Sorry? According to you, what is intelligence? What is? Intelligence. 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 Okay, that's a very good question. Intelligence, okay, according to me, what is intelligence? So I believe intelligence is when you have all the tools, all the skills, all the uh, right programming, uh, let's say statistical algorithms and all that, in order to, to apply that knowledge to a computer, to a machine, or to somewhere else, and train them, train them so they can perform uh, what you know, uh, what, to, what you know how to do, kind of in a way. That's the way I kind of see it. I mean, it's, it's a very broad, uh, very broad term, um, but, but intelligence could be, I mean, it could be, it, you, you need to have a basic understanding and fundamental uh, concept of, you know, um, most technical concepts as well as business concepts as well. So it's kind of like a mixture of everything together, but you need to know how to apply them onto something, train that thing, and then, you know, hopefully see the results uh, in that way. Great. Very good question. Never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. I like that question. According to me, intelligence is very simple, just being rational. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a very good question. It's very broad, exactly, yeah. I do believe in this, uh, this 
very dangerous. Yeah. That's how it's our intelligence to be to coordinate with the machine. Mm. That we call to uh, achieve the goal of being intelligent. And it's very much more, it's something more complex and more sophisticated. Yes. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of human inventions. The, the conclusions, so that's what I think. Yeah. So, it's, it's still, yeah, so intelligence, it's how to, let's say, how to achieve peaceful, for mm. example, uh, or whatever you want to do in any type of business or any type of organization or, or politics, uh, and, 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 and dodge the, the, the danger or the dangerous part. So that would be intelligence, stuff to do, and not allowing, like, say, hackers or other people to crack into the system whatever intelligent, let's say, mm. uh, by government, or mm. uh, Tesla factory, mm. or uh, satellite launching. Yes. Uh, so this is intelligence. So you're creating something intelligent, because you're not allowing hackers to crack into the system and by uh, shooting uh, random people. Like that, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's... I'm, I'm an economist. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree in the sense, you know, it's a very broad term and it's very open ended, as I said. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer in a way. Uh, it all makes sense. And what you said makes sense. What you said it makes sense. What anyone would say makes sense in a way. It's just like each one has their own term, the, the one that they're closely related to in a way. But that's a very good question. So thank you for the discussion. Sorry? <laughs> that's great. Great, that's great. So we'll continue the session and then we'll spend a lot of time, you know, conversating about different aspects of the technology. Please continue. Great. Okay, so we've talked about AI, artificial intelligence, and how it basically enables machines to simulate human behavior or mimic human behavior. Now, what is machine learning? Machine learning is exact, is a subset of AI, and it allows a machine to automatically learn from past data without being programmed explicitly. Uh, so how, how does that happen? It uses statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experiences. The goal with machine learning is we want, uh, is we, it wants to build the learning capability in computers uh, because obviously we are training those computers to uh, automatically learn from past data without being explicitly programmed. So this is the goal of machine learning. Uh, some popular examples of machine learning or where machine learning can be applied include image and speech recognition, video surveillance, uh, social media services such as personalizing your news feed, better ads, uh, people who you may know suggestions as well. All of those are empowered by machine learning uh, tools. So now we've talked about artificial intelligence, we've talked about machine learning. We have also what we call deep learning and neural networks. I'm going to briefly talk about them. Uh, so uh, artificial intelligence is the main branch, which is basically intelligence demonstrated by machines. Machine learning is the subset of AI. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning. And what uh, deep learning does is it, it imitates the workings of the human brain in processing data so the system can create patterns. Some examples of where deep learning can be used is self-driving cars, uh, visual recognition, visual assistance, uh, financial fraud detection as well, and all that. Neural networks, however, is an approach to artificial intelligence, and it analyzes factors with, with a structure that is similar to the human neural system. Uh, where neural networks can be used, uh, or where you can see it mostly, is in vehicle control, uh, social network filtering, fault detectors, product design analysis, dynamic modeling, and all that. Now, all of these are closely related to kind of each other in a way, so the application areas can be used uh, here, 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 or here in whatever branch. Uh, however, it's just about each one is used differently in a way. So now that we've talked about the, the core fields, uh, big data, data science, analytics, machine learning, and AI, we're going to explore the job, uh, the job professional roles in the world of data. Now, when it comes to roles, uh, professional roles, there's a wide variety of roles we have that are involved in managing, controlling, using, or accessing data. 
Some roles can be business oriented, some roles more, uh, involve more scientific research, some roles uh, are maybe a mixture of both, some roles uh, are hybrid uh, where, where they combine different aspects of data management and all that. Uh, most organizations um, have, we will we'll focus mostly on what most organizations uh, ask for. Um, and uh, those are the roles that we'll be talking about uh, that you mostly see in most organizations. However, it could differ from one organization to the other. So, uh, what are the three key job roles that deal with data in most organizations? We have database administrators, data engineers, and data analysts. Database administrators are basically uh, the people who manage the databases from A to Z. They, they take care of assigning permissions to users, accessing, uh, giving uh, access or deny uh, permissions as well, storing backup copies of data and restoring the data in the event of a failure. Data engineers take care of the whole infra infrastructures of uh, data integration across the organization. And they're the ones who take care of the data governance that uh, rules and they implement all the, uh, the data cleaning routines to, transform, to transforming data, uh, to uh, uh, transfer and transform data between systems. Data analysts are the ones who explore and analyze data uh, in order to create visualizations, reports, uh, answers, or charts that basically enable organizations to make uh, informed business decisions for their organization. Let's talk a bit more about those roles maybe in more detail. Now, database administrators, they take care of databases, as I said, from A to Z. And what that means is they're responsible for design, operation, implementation, and, uh, and maintenance of uh, database systems. They're also responsible for, uh, for making sure the availability and consistency, uh, performance, and optimization of databases is running as smoothly and as efficiently as possible. They're also responsible for managing security of data uh, and as well as uh, granting or denying access to users uh, who use, uh, as appropriate, who use those databases, uh, who use the data. And they work with stakeholders to implement policies, tools, and processes for backup and recovery plans in, in the case or event of uh, if we have a failure, for example. Data engineers take care of the whole uh, infrastructure of uh, data. They're the ones who uh, do everything from data ingestion, cleansing, transformation, transferring data activities, and data stores for analytical workloads. They use a wide range of data platform technologies, uh, including relational and non-relational databases, uh, file stores, and data streams. And they're the ones who are responsible, as I said, for ensuring the data, uh, the privacy of data is maintained within the cloud. Uh, and spanning from on-premises to the cloud uh, data stores. So basically anything that has to do with uh, data related workloads, the data engineer is the one who is responsible for all that stuff. When it comes to a data analyst, a uh, data analyst just like me is the one who analyzes data and breaks it down uh, so uh, we can make a benefit, so we can make value and benefit from that uh, result. Uh, they're, they're also the ones who are responsible for exploring data to identify trends, relationship, discover um, any hidden patterns that we have. I mean, Im imagine this, you have a data set that's in an Excel sheet. It doesn't make any sense to you at all unless you analyze it, unless you see the relationships between two, uh, two uh, of the, um, let's say, uh, two, two points. Uh, and, and, um, and so that's, that's where data analysis comes from. They use, uh, they use all their, uh, the tools and technologies they have as an analyst to analyze the data and to create visualizations uh, and reports based on what uh, they're finding. They, uh, also, data analysts, uh, they study the numbers and present them in a way that teams can use the information um, and make benefit of it. Uh, and this may require them to understand some current performance or plan for the future and find ways to optimize sales or website visits or identify trends according to different user groups. I mean, it differs, but it's good for the data analyst to be aware of all these things uh, in order to do the role uh, properly. A data scientist is the one who uses the statistical analysis as a scientific approach, and they're the ones who uh, need in-depth knowledge of machine learning and data con conditioning. They're the ones who are responsible for the t uh, tasks that have to do with data transformation and data cleaning as well. And they're, they, they're the ones who categorize, get, categorize various patterns in data, as well as develop machine learning algorithms to be more accurate and efficient. 
Now, when it comes to the most common essential skills needed for, let's say, most data professionals, I mean, it does not apply to uh, all of them, but the basics that everyone, I believe, should have from a data scientist, data analyst, data engineer, um, a data architect as well, a database administrator, would be uh, the following. It is definitely uh, important, one of the most important skills for data analysts or data professionals to know is SQL, which is a structured query language. It's a powerful programming language that is used for communicating with and extracting various data types from databases. Uh, another one is uh, the, the Microsoft Excel. Of course, uh, it's important, you know, you know uh, most, most uh, data sets arrive in Excel sheets. Uh, and are stored in Excel, so it's important to understand advanced modeling as well and uh, some techniques uh, related to analytics. Critical thinking, uh, data analysts or data professionals should always be curious, should be creative, they should always think on spots, they should always think ahead, think forward, uh, and, and also have a strong foundation of uh, statistical methods. Strong communication, you know, as a data analyst, when you have, a, when you, when you're done with your visualizations and your reports and you create what you found, it's very important for you to communicate to the stakeholder or to your customer your findings. So you need to have excellent, strong communication skills and tell them why uh, you w like your findings and present it in a way where they understand uh, what you are presenting. R or Python or statistical programming, it's very important to have a base, uh, strong knowledge in R or Python uh, for data gathering, data cleaning, statistical analysis, and data visualization. Uh, data visualization, uh, there are many tools that uh, use data visualization. You have Tableau, you have Power BI, uh, and, and this is very important, and it actually plays a huge role in data analysts or data professionals in general, because Nothing really makes sense until you see all the graphs, all the pie charts, all the uh, findings that you have. So it's important to know uh, when you need to select a pie chart, a line chart, a bar graph, for example, and all that. Machine learning, uh, there are many machine learning algorithms that we have for supervised and unsupervised learning. It's very important to have uh, and build a strong basis for that. And lastly, uh, presentation skills, which is uh, part of strong communication as well. We need to be able to present your uh, findings in a clear and effective way. So let's talk about some applications and use cases where we can find um, uh, data or where data is used. Now, analytics uh, has a wide variety of applications. It's used in many and most industries, ranging from it could be healthcare, education, finance, banking, retail, uh, transportation, e-commerce, and anything else that basically comes to your mind. Let's take some examples. For example, how is data analytics used in the education industry? Uh, data analytics can be used to create customized programs for students based on their grades. And after understanding the attention span, uh, they can be offered blended learning, and that includes op opportunities for offline and online learning for students. So through customized programs, students can basically access the study material online along with lecture and can study at their own pace. Uh, other than customized programs, you can also reduce the number of dropouts. Uh, this is where big data can be used uh, for performing predictive analysis to understand how students might basically perform in the near future. The analysis will basically look at the performance of students throughout the year and from then predict if they might drop out or just stay. And uh, another example for the education industry where analytics could use uh, is uh, uh, in a better grading system. Now, big data can help educators or instructors track the performance of students. The analysis and understanding the performance of an individual and the collective level, uh, it will help educators understand the areas of interest among students and this grading system can then be enhanced for the future to highlight wh which key areas uh, the student has excelled. This will also give, allow teachers give valuable feedback to students and assist them in the future. Healthcare industry. There are many applications where data can be used in the healthcare industry. Um, however, some could include uh, in patient care, in operations management, um, in improving provision of, of clinical care, uh, improving patient care, taking preventive measures, um, uh, also as well as predicting uh, the drug uh, amount, uh, faster and more accurate diagnosis, more personalized treatment, and more informed decision making. I mean, it's, it's really vast what you, you can do with healthcare and data analytics, but it does play a huge role in uh, basically changing people's lives or making it better. 
internet searches. So the goal of all search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, is to deliver you to the best results that fit your needs in the shortest time possible. Data science algorithms uh, will analyze your previous search and internet use behavior to predict what you're looking for. And it will basically leverage information uh, like the most visited website, demographics, uh, location, previous searches as well, and so many more. This is why your search results may not match your friends' results even if you are searching for the same thing. So it will look at the history of your data and it will, uh, in a way, uh, suggest to you or recommend to you what you are looking for. The last application we will go through is uh, speech recognition and it is one of my favorites. So uh, we have popular digital assistants such as Alexa from Amazon, Siri from Apple, Google Assistant for Google and Cortana from Microsoft. Now, obviously these days you could be in bed and you could ask Siri to open the window, to close the door, to switch on the light, or to do whatever you want to do, or even get you your coffee. Uh, this is what we call speech recognition. So there is the system basically takes the input from you, analyzes it, and then gives you the output. So these are just some of the application areas where data, uh, big data could be used. There are many more, uh, but it will take me so forever to talk about them and I would love to talk about them. So uh, that's for now. Now we will talk about and identify the cloud data services associated with the data professional roles we have. Uh, I'm not going to dig deeply into them because we will have a session specifically in detail related to uh, the data services in specific because it's a kind of heavy in depth but just to have an idea uh, of it, we will go through some of these data services. So when it comes to data services, we have Microsoft Azure. Is anyone familiar with Microsoft Azure? Great, can, can you maybe tell me what Microsoft Azure is? Sorry? Okay, great. And? Okay, great, got you. So uh, Azure is a cloud platform that basically powers applications and IT infrastructure for some of the world's largest organizations. It includes many services to support cloud solutions, including transactional and analytical data workloads. We will go through these in a bit. Uh, as I said, it's a cloud computing platform and it offers a wide uh, range, uh, range of services and tools that you can benefit for, from uh, when working with data or uh, like uh, for storing your data, for uh, securing your data, uh, and for basically whatever you want to do. Now, five major benefits of why you can use Microsoft Azure is because of the speed of service it offers. It, it has enhanced flexibility in the platform, integrated delivery pipeline, disaster recovery, and security. So this is just an overview of what a Microsoft Azure offers. We have many platform services and many infrastructure services, uh, and we have the sectors for security, uh, media, integration, compute, application platform, developer services, data, intelligence, analytics, and internet of things, networking, storage, compute, and so much more. And under each uh, platform, we have the service, uh, the, the related service uh, that, is, uh, uh, that, is, um, that is specific to uh, that uh, platform. Now, we're not going to cover everything. We're just going to cover the ones that are related to the data professional roles. So the first, uh, the first one that we have is Azure SQL. Azure SQL is basically a collective name for a family of relational database solution based on the Microsoft SQL service database engine. There are specific Azure SQL services, uh, and those include Azure SQL database, which is basically a fully managed platform as a service database hosted in Azure. So it does everything kind of from A to Z uh, as a platform. Uh, Azure SQL managed instance. So basically that is a hosted instance of SQL uh, with automated man maintenance. Um, and it it's basically allows more flexible configuration than the one above it, which is the database, but with more administrative responsibility for the owner. So um, uh, that is the managed instance. And Azure SQL VM is the virtual machine with which has an installation of SQL in it. And uh, what Azure SQL VM uh, offers, it allows maximum configurability with full management responsibility. 
Now, who can use Azure SQL? Basically, database administrators, engineers, and analysts. Data and admin, database administrators typically provision and manage uh, Azure SQL database systems to basically support line of business applications that need to store transactional data. So everything that has to do with storing transactional data in databases, database administrators are the one who take care of that. Data engineers uh, can perform the ETL process, which is an extract, transform, and load uh, operations to inject transactional data into an analytical system. And that Azure Cosmos DB is basically a globally distributed database that supports uh, no SQL options. So it does not follow, uh, it supports the, uh, the SQL, uh, no SQL, which does not follow a specific structured query uh, programming language. Um, and it supports multiple application programming interfaces, which we call APIs, which enable you to store and manage data as JSON documents, key value pairs, column families, and graphs. As I said, I'm not going to go in depth on what these are because we're going to have a session related to those because it's uh, to, so much information and we only have an hour. Uh, however, I just want you guys to have an idea of what these services are and how you can use them to benefit for, from storing your data, uh, from transforming your data, and so on. Now, in some organization, Cosmos DB instances may be provisioned and managed by database administrators, and data engineers uh, also, uh, often they need to integrate Cosmos DB um, data sources into uh, analytical solutions that will basically support uh, modeling, reporting, and visualizations by data, uh, that are done by data analysts as well. Azure Storage, uh, this is where uh, it's a core Azure service that basically in, in, uh, enables you to store your data in block containers, in file shares, and in tables. In block containers, uh, we mean it because it's very scalable, it has cost-effective storage for uh, binary or large files. File shares, network file shares, such as the one that you typically have in uh, corporate networks, and tables, which are key value storage for applications that need to write, read and write data values quickly. Um, who uses Azure Storage most? Uh, mostly data engineers to host their data lakes, which is uh, blob storage with a hierarchical uh, namespace that basically enables files to be organized in folder folders in a distributed file systems.
this engine which is optimized for data warehouse uh, workloads uh, apache spark it is an open source distributed data processing system and it supports multiple programming language uh, ranging from java python uh, scala and even sql and azure synapse data explorer and it is a high performance data analytics solution which is basically optimized for real-time querying of log and telemetry data uh, who can use Azure Synapse uh, Analytics? Uh, mostly data engineers to, uh, who want to create a unified solution that basically co combines those data ingestion pipelines as well as uh, data warehouse storage and data lake storage through a single service. Uh, data analytics as well can benefit from using Azure Synapse uh, Analytics uh, by using SQL and Spark pools uh, through interactive notebooks to explore and analyze data as well as um, Take advantage of the integration with services such as we have other services that are not included like Azure Machine Learning and Microsoft Power uh, BI to create data models and visualizations as well as extract insights and make sense of that data. We have uh, Azure Databricks and that is an integrated version of the popular Databricks platform and it basically combines Apache Spark data processing platform with SQL dat database semantics and an integrated management interface to enable large scale data analytics. Uh, now who can benefit most from Azure Databricks? We have data engineers. Uh, they can use the existing Databricks and Spark skills in order to create, uh, create analytical data scores in Azure Databricks. Data, data analysts as well can use the native notebook support in Azure Databricks to query and visualize data and create reports as well, uh, which because it's uh, an easy to use web-based uh, interface. We have the Azure HD Insight. Uh, it is an Azure service that provides Azure hosted clusters for popular Apache open source big data processing technologies, including some we have Apache Spark, now, what Apache Spark is, uh, it's a data processing system and supports multiple programming languages, including Python, SQL, Java, Scala, and many more. Apache Hadoop, it's a system that uses MapReduce jobs to process large volume, volumes of data across multiple cluster nodes. Um, Apache HBase, it's an open source system for large scale, no SQL data storage and querying. It's querying. So if you have that storage and querying, you can use the Apache HBase. Apache Kafka, it is the message broker for data stream processing. So anything that has to do with processing data streams and all that stuff, you can use Apache Kafka for that. Apache Storm, uh, it's an open source system for real-time data processing through a topology of spouts and bolts. Uh, who can use Azure HD Insight or benefit from it most? Um, this is heavy uh, data analytics workload, uh, related workloads. So obviously data engineers will be the one who will benefit most from that. We have Azure Stream Analytics, and the Azure Stream Analytics service is a real-time stream processing engine that basically captures the stream of data from an input, applies a query, a query to extract and manipulate data from the input, and then writes the results to an output for the analysis or further processing. Uh, this, uh, this process is usually used by data engineers um, who can capture streaming data for ingestion of the data uh, into analytical data store or for real-time visualizations and graphs. We are almost there. We have the Azure Data Explorer. Uh, that is a standalone service that basically offers the same high-performance querying of log and telemetry data just the, uh, similarly to the Azure Synapse Data Explorer runtime in Azure Synapse Analytics. 
uh, who can use the, uh, the Azure Data Explorer the most? It is the data analysts because obviously they work a lot with querying and analyzing data, which include a time step attribute, such as typically found in log files, Internet of Things, telemetry data, and so much more. We have the Microsoft Preview, uh, which, is, which provides a solution for enterprise-wide data governance and discoverability. Uh, because it works with data governance and discoverability, so data engineers are the ones who are enforced to, uh, to uh, work with data governance uh, across the enterprise and ensure the integrity or security of data uh, is used to support analytical workloads. And basically, what you can do with Microsoft Pre Preview is you can use it to create a map of your data and track the data lineage across multiple data sources and systems, which will then enable you to find uh, the right trustworthy data that will then help you uh, move on for more further analysis and reporting and visualizations as well. Last but not least, we have the Microsoft Power BI platform. Uh, I think most of us are similar or have heard this, uh, to what, tool, uh, what this tool is all about. It's usually used for modeling, creating reports, and it is one of the most important tools that actually us as data analysts have to use uh, to make interactive data visualizations. Power BI reports can be created using the Power BI desktop application and the published and delivered through web-based reports and apps in the Power BI service, as well as in the Power BI mobile app. So anything that has to do with visualizations, creating dashboards, uh, reporting, uh, interactive uh, data visualizations, Microsoft Power BI is the tool for that. So now that we have covered and went through those concepts uh, a bit briefly, What's next? My suggestion to you all is to check out our further learning resources. I have put in these two links that will be very uh, helpful and valuable for you to continue your, your learning journey, uh, the one that we started today. So if you want to know more about data concepts, the one we've talked about in the first part of the session, please go to the first uh, link, Exploring uh, Core Data Concepts. And the second one is, uh, is a more in-depth, uh, let's say detailed, um, a Microsoft Learn module uh, regarding the fundamentals of Microsoft Azure. So if you have any questions or any, um, or any, let's say, inquiries that you want to know more about Microsoft Azure, what we covered today, if you want to know about the services, a specific service, for example, uh, in specific, uh, this is your way to go. Uh, all the learning modules that we have are free on our Microsoft Learn platform. So definitely check it out, uh, have a look at it, and you know we would definitely encourage you to go on further with what you uh, would like to learn. Uh, other than, other than uh, data science, Microsoft Azure, we even have other uh, tech topics covered on Microsoft Azure for you guys uh, for free to learn. We have DevOps, we have um, uh, machine learning, we have AI, we have anything, Kubernetes, Anything that comes to mind that has to do with technical uh, uh, technical concepts or technical fields, uh, you will definitely find. So definitely encourage you to check it out. And that's it from my side. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Thank you to everyone, to the online audience for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here with you all. Before we end the stream and before we end the session, I would like to encourage you all to uh, stay tuned for my next session. Uh, it will be a hybrid event, um, which is going to be talking about a dive into the data analytics journey. We will start by talking more into the data analytics journey, and we will start discovering data cleaning and pre-processing steps. So we'll, we'll, we will go through that in detail, and then I will have, it's going to be like a series that I will take you through. So after that, we'll, we'll talk more about data analysis, about data visualization, and about creating reports and all that. Uh, it will be in-depth happening on the 27th of July uh, at 6.30 p.m. GST. So please uh, feel free to join us, and I look forward to meeting you all. Uh, please don't forget to join us on our Microsoft React, uh, Microsoft uh, Meet, sorry, on our Meetup group for Microsoft Reactive Middle East and Africa. Uh, that's where you will find us and stay up to date with our latest events. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you to the audience for being here, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>